to to come full circle, I think I'm being I'm proud of the fact that I've been able to see past that that thought in my head of like I need to be this person to create like this, and realizing that I'm a better person when I am actually like being a better person. You know what I mean? As opposed to like living out that like the artist fantasy. <laughs> Hey everyone, thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. Today I'm joined by Nate, found on Instagram as Bread Life. Um, he's a, a photographer, a handyman, he's going to be a fisherman pretty soon in a minute here. He's in a band, he plays multiple instruments. So here's here's like part of why I'm less prepared today, is because you walked in the stables today and you said, yeah. hey, in like an hour I'm driving to Colorado, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. leaving Savannah. Yeah. So, um, like, what's the deal there? Um, I just, I like to like take, um, just like go fuck around as much as possible. I guess I, I was explaining to a friend because I'm leaving before we're playing a show. And I said to him, I was like, I'm a lot like, remember Albert, that dog that I had? Mm -hmm. I'm a lot like that dog because it's like, He's a terrible dog if he's the kind of dog that just needs to, like, sit inside, you know? But if you let Albert go run around in a field for, like, a couple hours, then he'll come back and he'll be, like, the best dog in the world. Like, meaning, like, he's, like, calm and, like, not. So that, I, I just, like, compare myself to that dog where it's, like, I need those moments of, like, going and just, like, fucking around for a while. So that's what Colorado is? The, it's mostly like the drive back. Like I'm, I'm leaving today, so I have time. I have like about two weeks to get home, so it's just time to like go, do whatever. No plan, no itinerary. No plan, just go, fucking look around. Just yeah. like when it says west, you go west and yeah. cool. Yeah. And then, uh, so then after the after, how long are you gonna be in Colorado for? You're going back to Eagle. Yeah, back to Eagle. I'm only gonna be there for like four days. Okay, and then. I'm just going back home, or not back home, going to Alaska. Have you been? I've never been to Alaska, no. Okay, so yeah. what's uh, what's like, what's drawing you there? Um, my younger brother, well, we actually have a family friend who did it, who went fishing out there. Um, he did it for two seasons, and then put my little brother onto the idea. And my little brother did it, so I was like, if my little brother can do it, then I can fucking do it. <laughs> um, so... That, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just like, a, um, it's a crazy experience. So you already like got the gig and everything. Like, mm -hmm. did your brother hook you up with like the who to talk to and everything? There's actually there's like a for anyone who wants to go fishing in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a Facebook group um, that you can go on to, and like you you basically like post like your resume. Like I uh, I did this and this and like this is why I would be able to work on a boat and then they just they hit you up and say yes or no pretty much so what were your credentials okay <laughs> you don't really have to have a lot of credentials you just have to you just have to make your sounds or make yourself sound like uh just like willing and able basically i yeah that's it do you know what the uh the schedule's like it's like 18 hour days. Yeah? Yeah. So like you, you like get up at like one in the morning? Yeah, I think it's like four in the morning. So the way it works is there, when, at least in the first two weeks, you go out and there's like certain times, I forget what they're called, but there's certain times where it's basically like free game. Like you, you fish as much as you want. I can't remember anything right now, but you fish as much as you want and Sometimes that'll last for eight hours and sometimes it lasts for 18. So it's like, yeah, there's no real like set schedule, but it's, it's long days. So it's all Alaskan salmon too? Mm-hmm. Is that what you guys going to like eat all, every eat every day too? Yeah. Do you eat raw fish? I eat raw fish, yeah. So you think they'll just <laughs> cut some up and I don't know. snack on it? I, I'd be excited if that was the case though. I mean, it's like a good it's good for you. Yeah. I'm gonna have good skin when I come back. For sure, yeah. <laughs> the the what B three or whatever? Yeah. Huh. Omegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh let's see. All right. So and so that lasts a couple months. Mm-hmm. Okay, that one. Two went. months. 
have you thought that far ahead or are you uh, just kind of like one day at a time well forget we if we can get we want to get deep here let's do it let's do it let's go <laughs> um yeah so after i get back i mean i don't know what what's going to happen between then and now and like how i'm going to feel and who i'll be as a person but a, a big part of me before, I, if you would ask me a month ago, I would have said, I'm not fucking, there's no way I'm coming back. I'm just going to go drive around the country and like do whatever. But a lot has happened since then that has made me realize that it's important to have people in your life and it's it's hard to keep them in your life. Um, it's hard to be the person that you want to be around them. Um, so on that sentiment, I'm probably going to end up coming back because this band has been, you know, it's been like frustrating. I ask any of us and we'll say it's been pretty frustrating. Um, and the old me was really good at just like walking away from shit. I, that's what I did in college. I was just like, I don't care. I'm done. Instead of looking at it as something that's like, it can be accomplished and like overcome. It's more of just like an obstacle. Like in, in the Avengers, when uh, Robert Downey Jr. says, I think I'd rather just cut the wire instead of like crawl over it mm. that's like i mean it just that was like how i used to look at shit and just be like oh so i'm gonna have to do this why should i do this but it makes you a better person no i feel that i uh i'm somebody that's always kind of shook up my life every couple of years mm -hmm. and now i've been in savannah for a couple of years and i get that itch like I need to like go somewhere, or do yeah. something or whatever. And I'm yeah. like, no, 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 no. And this is like, this is the time. This is the place yeah. for me to like, kind of like try and build something yeah. for the first time. So it's, it's hard. It's really hard. I read something about like escape fantasies and how people start it, it, like if you're in a relationship. Um, oh, sure. Like you start fantasizing about cheating because you're not happy with where you are. And it's like, sometimes all it takes is like, you just have to go like instead of deciding to move to fucking like Nova Scotia and then realizing that you fucked up, like you just take a day trip or something and come back and kind of like reset everything. I heard a, I heard novelty is a specifically male uh, desire. Women like stability. Mm -hmm. And even in sex, they like their position. Mm -hmm. Guys like to constantly mix it up. Yeah. So... It's like we get a little stir crazy. We're like, yeah. all right, I have a good job. I'm getting paid well, but it's like not enough. Yeah. I gotta do. I gotta Absolutely. do something. Yeah. yeah. I I feel like I don't know what do you, I I think for me that mostly comes from like I I guess a lot of my life thinking that comfort was like the enemy. You know what I mean? Because, like, all my best experiences have always been, like, from my worst experiences. Like, having the worst times and being like, well, I was fucking terrible. Like, it was great. It, does that make sense? You're, is it kind of like a, you're a sadist a little bit? Like, you, you kind of like putting yourself through torture kind of thing? It's, yeah, it's just more life affirming, I guess. Okay, so, like, I, tr I worked really hard... Like, people that run marathons. I don't yeah. run, but, like, that yes, kind of thing. Exactly like that. When I was a kid, I used to do bike races. I was, I was like, a mountain bike racer. And I remember throwing up. First time I threw up during a race. And it was, like, a turn-on. <laughs> it was, like... And I don't understand. I think that's just, like, an overly aggressive way to, like, live life. But it's just something that... I think it takes more to restrain yourself from going that hard than going that because it's so easy to like I, I have a lot of energy most of the time so I can just like push myself until like whatever it, it's it's but it's harder it's way harder to like understand that self-preservation is sometimes m more rewarding than like this like grueling and like uh, I can't think of a good word, but just like like some brutal experience. I don't know. Like if if you were looking at life, like okay, you have an option to either like go explore the country, or like just go whatever, be a fucking trust the foreign, or go to school and like stay in one place for four years. 
I would normally just be like, yeah, like I'm just gonna fucking go. Like I'm just gonna go. I go like run around, you know, like the dog. Yeah, yeah, like a dog. <laughs> but it, and I, I used to think that that was like the way to live life. Like that was like you're like out, like you're just like go and get it. But it, it now I admire people so much more who can just like just like sit still i don't know it's my my brothers are both like that and it's like a bizarre thing and i wish i i i don't wish but like i'm trying to be that person like trying to stay still like that no it com- it comes a little bit with time yeah and then but then also you like you, you meet enough people and you see enough places you get to a point where you're like i'm i'm like not happier yeah you know just because i saw this sunset or this like state state park or whatever you right. know what i mean yeah then you're like just kind of chasing something and then yeah then you're like everyone else is like getting married and having kids and shit and you're like yeah. what am i doing you know yeah. so um tell me about the band you mentioned the band um the band is called bastard name yeah. um it's four piece right now i started it with uh ethan and I, it was ethan and i I guess conceptualized it and then Jake was there for the conception. Jake it was Jake was a part of it too, the beginning too. And then Caster, who's actually coming back in August, uh, is the drummer. And Simon's playing bass right now. Did y'all kind of mix it up anyway or two, right? Yeah, it's been switched the the format has been switched around a couple of times. So you sing mostly, right? That was what I did when we started it, but now I play bass. Okay. So um it's it's all kind of like figuring itself out though for sure that's yeah how did you like what was it uh, what got you into music in the very first place were you young or did you pick that up later no i had no idea that you could even like make music until you were like until i was like 17 because i remember there was like a guitar in our basement i mean yeah music's always been there like it's always just like as just like an integral part of life um but yeah i it's really it's taken me till like now to like start under not even like understanding it but like applying knowledge i've been playing guitar since i was 17 that's when i like found i picked up a guitar and i was like okay this i had a i fucked my hip up really bad and i saw it like i was like bedridden I had nothing to do. So I was just like, I was, I'm just going to learn guitar. Um, How'd you do that? How'd you hurt your hip? I was skating, actually. I was, <laughs> it was terrible. I was rolling in. Um, I was rolling in to a quarter pipe, and I, like, just fell forward. I, like, dislocated my hip. Oh, God. Which was weird. Was it a high? Like, was it six feet or something? something yeah, it was, like, a six-foot Okay, pipe, yeah. I just, like, fucked up something. Just ate it, yeah. Yeah. It's always when you least expect it. That's when you're like, you eat it the hardest. I I knew it was coming though when it happened because I, I like, I like lean into it. It's just, bro, when you don't commit to something, yeah. you're like, all right, this is going to hurt. Like, you know, like in that instant of like, okay, are you in it or not in it? And you're not, you're like, ah, this is going to fucking suck. I think that's why like skating's more mental than it is physical. Yeah, like, definitely. you know if you commit, you're gonna be mm-hmm. fine, but you still kick out and yeah. then, like, your feet are fucked. You skate, right? Yeah. Okay, I've yeah. never seen you skate. I, I saw you like a second ago. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. No, like I uh, I've been skating my whole not my whole life, but since I'm like thirteen, fourteen. Yeah. So. Why did you? What made you decide to start skating? Um, I actually picked up an issue of, well, my neighbors were like kind of into it. And mm-hmm. then I picked up an issue of Transworld skateboarding and it had like Chris Haslam on the cover. Mm-hmm. He was on like, a, it was like, that was in, um, like 2004, 2005. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. And then I just started thumbing through it and then just skating with the neighbors and then I moved and then I moved to a neighborhood with kids that skated Mm -hmm. and then that was kind of that and then like I feel like I learned all the basic tricks in like the first year and then I kind of like peaked off right there I was like I just I never got to be like super good yeah but I I still watch videos like every day oh absolutely well video parts are it's like yeah getting good is a whole other fucking thing now because I 
but yeah, it, it took me to like this year to realize like you have to be like completely mentally. Um, it, it's it's not like meditation. It, it's like an exercise in focus. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like you have to pay attention to every single thing that you do. And I've noticed that like if you're not good at skating, like if you watch people who are bad, like particularly bad, like you can tell like they're thinking about like what their hands are doing and not like their feet as much because they're like, I want this to look good. So I'm gonna, like, fucking, there's a whole Instagram page that like makes fun of people who do it. But I just noticed that I was like, I, I do that shit because like I fucking, I do like weird shit with my hands instead of just like thinking about your feet. Uh-huh. And you have some people yeah. like point and stuff like that. Yeah. The claw. Do like the little fucking whatever. Um, yeah, I like it. It's like a creative and guitar has kind of become that for me. But mm-hmm. like I can still play guitar and think about other things when I'm trying to land a trick. 100 percent of my body, 100 percent of my mind is just focused on landing yeah. that trick. Yeah. So I'm not thinking about all the other bullshit in my life. Mm-hmm. So it is kind of like that escape from myself a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I found, I found like, I found like certain things like painting is something I can do or like, I don't know, just certain other activities I can do those and be in my head and then just be doing that mindlessly a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then skating is a hundred percent like, mindfulness yeah. kind of thing so there's like a spectrum of activities there so i'm like kind of similar in that way um do you think like do you think certain people are just creative and other people aren't yes 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 and no i mean like everyone Everyone is creative and everyone's capable of like inventing solutions and like inventing new outlooks. Not everyone has like an appealing like style or, you know, aesthetic or whatever. I think that when people say like they're, yeah, like everyone's creative, like and anyone can draw a picture of. I, I feel like every time that I've seen someone who I never thought of as someone who's like artistically inclined do something artistic, I've been like, that was fucking incredible. Like, that was sick. Um, like friends or uh, yeah, that kind of thing? Yeah, I have a friend, I'm thinking of a friend off top right now who we were just like trying to come up with like t-shirt graphics one time when we were like 13 and I was like, oh, I'm gonna draw it draw this sick one and he he just did like a he just i think he just wrote like nascar and did like some smiley face and i was like that's incredible (laughs) like that's yeah do you think do you think there's true originality or do you think everything that we do is recycled from something we've already oh absolutely everything is everything is like completely recycled even if you do something that's like original i still think um, it's like, I, I, I don't think primordial is the right word, but like hardwired in. Yeah. There's, I, I feel like there's a part in everyone's brain. There is, I think like Freud wrote about it or something. I'm pulling out Freud. Quote. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's like a primal side of your brain that like, that's like where dreams are embedded, like mm-hmm. your, your natural instinct of fear and, and what have you. Uh, like fear and and sex and shit like that even if yeah if you do something original normally it's 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 hard to say that with music though because i feel like music everything in music is so derivative except for like rhythmic shit because i mean like romantic like i don't know if it was the baroque era but like music was a very like that was a science like when it was created like in, yeah clap mozart era yeah and then beethoven was the one that's like it's more about feeling right Something i like think that. i it was uh religious at first it was like a religious idea because it, 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 it started in the church like i mean english or not english music but like western music started like began in the churches yeah um and it was all like gregorian chants and things like that mm-hmm. and it yeah developed into this very complex science of like harmonies and poly uh, poly harmonies 
Yeah, I think that is a word. Sounds right. Yeah, something like that. But, I mean, yeah, everyone has, like, something inside of them. Like, it's a natural instinct to, like, clap or, like, you know, like, to, like, hit something, like a drum, you know? So, in terms of, in terms of music, I don't think anything you, nothing you can do is, like, you know, obviously, like, brand new, but every, you can do anything original. I also think it feel, it's, like, a culmination of, like, if you find all of these, like, inspirations and you can boil them down into one thing, you can, like, make it your own thing. Um, so, let's see. Because I love, I like, I love picking people's brains about this. The one weird thing about talking about art and, like, creativity is, like, the whole point is you're trying to break away from what's like the norm and discover like your own version of something. And mm-hmm. so, you know, the, like the, what I could say is like, well, what kind of music do you perform? And you know right. what I mean? And then you're like, we, you know, we do yeah. rock, rock and roll. And it's like, well, we do bastard in, right? Like, yeah. like we are influenced by all these things. Mm-hmm. So, um, how about like your photography? Mm-hmm. Not, what do you like to shoot but like what's kind of your approach when you're walking around with your camera um like if i'm just like in the streets or something like just walking around. yeah i mean like what you just we just before this podcast we sat down and we looked through some of your photos Mm -hmm. like um when do you like to shoot what do you what what is like worthy of you know clicking that button for you um i preferably i i go out and just like into the streets just like for practice basically it's like exercise um and just to get more of a feeling for you know like settings on the camera but the shit that i really like to shoot would be like uh like going to parties or like like if i if someone's fighting like if there's people fighting like that's a really good time to like just shit that's like visually jarring, I guess. Like nighttime shit, long exposure things. Um, anything, yeah. Like I guess like photojournalistic kind of style, but you know, like the classic, like Gonzo. I think growing up, <laughs> like really thinking that Vice was the shit <laughs> was like a heavy part of that. I mean, it's yeah. Anything that's like. Uh, visually arresting and disturbing um not like disturbed not like, well sometimes what what about fighting specifically have, uh, you ever, have you been in fight or do you fight yeah i don't i don't actively like seek out and fight but um but there's something about fighting specifically like that would be yeah a good I, subject for you yeah that it's i i just i enjoy like um, like, I guess the compositional appeal of like a group of bodies all like in one like violent motion against each other. Um, it's some, I think it's really hard to like capture that well, but yet yeah, all the limbs crossing and, you know whatever fluids are spilling out um and then i just thought of something i forgot it but yeah fighting i haven't i've never really like photographed like a good fight but um do you have a goal for your photography um a goal i yeah i just i want to be able to do like shows like have shows and do um, like traditional like print them out and then like hang them up in a gallery and people yeah come and like a gallery show and do i i haven't really even considered like what i would want to do with them um hmm. billboards would be really cool doing like wraps i don't know like wrapping something in a photograph um I don't know. I feel like there's like some weird spiritual goal that I have that I can't think of right now, like something transcendent, <laughs> but I don't really know like what that would look like. Um, so I talked about this on the podcast when you're like creating, 
you're kind of creating a time capsule of like yourself and also that moment. Yeah. So you're, you're capturing that moment, but you're also like you have, there's a reason that you took that photograph or like Mm -hmm. you played that note or whatever. So, um, I like just creating because it kind of just creates this when I'm gone, the, the transcendence of my life is like when I'm gone, the only thing that'll be left is the stuff that I made. Yeah. And so, while it's like imp- like I still do enough consuming where I'm watching Netflix and I'm scrolling through YouTube and Instagram and everything else, but like I kind of make it a point to shoot videos and shoot photos and write music and write notes and stuff. And even yeah. if it doesn't go anywhere, like that's kind of my transcendence. So, of- so like, is your, are you saying like your goal is like that? Um- there's a word for what you just said, like maintaining your, like your spiritual existence, um, not your spiritual, but like physical proof that you existed. You know what I mean? Like, is that your goal or is that like your like transcendent experience? Like, through? it's not, it's not my goal. Cause I'll get like, I'll go down this path where I'm like, well, eventually the sun's going to explode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so really, you know, it's, it's none of it's going to last, yeah. but, uh, Absolutely. But it's like kind of the thing that motivates me day to day mm. is like, okay, I've been watching a lot of TV. I need like last night I, I watched Netflix for like three hours and then I was like, yeah. I need to go. I need to create. And yeah, so yeah, like, I, I, and I did like two paintings, like just yeah. like at, at like 10 o'clock at night. Are they in here? No, they're at my house. Oh, okay. But I'll, when uh, I'll hang them up eventually. Yeah, so, cool. um, but, and I'm not, I'm not a painter. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I am an artist, but I'm not yeah. a painter, but like, I just need to create basically. Yeah. So, and like, and I actually tell people that I'm not a photographer, but I, I shoot, yeah, I shoot photos all the time, yeah. but like, that's not what I want to be. So that, what you just said about like, you're not a painter, but you need to create that. That's one thing that I was thinking about when you asked if everyone's creative, my mind is so terrible at having conversations, but just, um, is that like some people don't need to like express themselves like in any way like my older brother who's an engineer he's not like you know he's you wouldn't look at him in the street and be like ah, that guy looks fucking creative he's but he's a genius like i remember i learned how to sew and i like thought i was a shit because i was making like these like whatever i was making like neck whatever and he makes like duffel bags now out of like recycled materials and it's that those people are creative but it it mystifies me that like certain people don't need that expression like if you were just sitting around you're like fuck like i gotta make something now you know i don't i don't know a lot of people in my life that don't feel the need to like take whatever emotion they have or like whatever sensation they're feeling and like translate it through some kind like visual or auditorial medium um but yeah, I, I feel like you don't have to be a painter to paint. I don't know. What what are you, are you a photographer like by by name? No, I'm a video guy first and foremost. Okay. Um but I do I don't sew. I've never sewed. Yeah. But so there's like some things I don't do or I've never done or mm-hmm. but like maybe someday, I don't know. But uh I don't know. I'm just like an artist and like I'm working towards like Re- removing the filter more and more mm. and more and more mm. as I'm like, uh, now I don't have a corporate job and it's looking like I'm not going to need one again. Yeah. And so like, I can just be like more authentically me. And it, I'm wondering if like, if I go down the path that I see myself going down and I want to go down, mm. if people will be like, wow, he's changed or something like that. Cause I feel like I'm actually going, moving towards who I am more and more so yeah. the older I get because like I just don't give a fuck yeah. <laughs> tell people here like if you don't like it yeah. just don't listen you know yeah. and that's fine you know but yeah. uh, but if you do listen and if you've been listening this long I appreciate you <laughs> yeah God bless yeah um, and I like talking to artists because yeah. like it's it's like a spectrum but not like a left to right spectrum it's like a three dimensional spectrum of how people approach their work yeah and so i relate to some things and then i also 
And then you, you change through time too. So mm-hmm. like how, how I, how old are you? I'm 21. Yeah. So like when I was 21, I was just in a different place than I am now. You know, yeah. I was less self, like I had less confidence in myself, mm-hmm. but like also I was like kind of like f- fucking up. And then yeah. also just like yeah. really focused on if I'm going to do art, I need to like do something with it. Mm-hmm. Or like if I'm going to have a podcast, I need like the number one podcast or I need to go, go to Hollywood yeah. and make like a big, make like a movie. Yeah. And then now I'm like, I'm actually been toying with the idea of like, uh, like just writing comedy more. Yeah. And, but I'm like, I don't, I don't necessarily want to become like a, a, comedy a comedian or yeah. whatever, but like, but that's, that's the thing is like every time you do something, especially when it's terrible, it's like, it's like, um, you're, you're that much closer to making one thing that's good. And it, it takes, I have to remind myself of that because it's so easy to forget and I'm so inclined to instant gratification constantly that it takes so long like to get to that point. And it, I feel like to reach the, um, I don't know why I'm thinking of basket art right now. I've been thinking about it too much. But to to reach like that point where you're like you're you are like your complete like self, whether or not you're an artist, it takes a lot of time and a lot of like introspection um, that I haven't done. <laughs> well, and I don't know if you ever really do get to the point where you're like, okay, I'm there. Like, yeah, I think that it's like just the process kind of thing and like and it's it's kind of like the you got you might veer off your path and like sell your sell your soul a little bit mm-hmm. like well, i remember we talked about that one time like at the end of the day like you gotta pay the bills right yeah so you're like having to do stuff you don't necessarily want to do mm-hmm. but then and then you might like get in your own head and be like too pretentious and too much of an artist right that you're like better than people or whatever right but like as long as you know it, like who you want to be You'll, you'll bring yourself back to that centeredness. Yeah, you can like find a balance between those yeah. two. I, I also feel like there's a, I mean, wait, I'm just going to like treat this like therapy now. I'm just going to tell you all my... All For my sure. Yeah. But there's a, a, a really like big part of me that like always wants to just like quit a job. And I, kn- I know for a fact that like I couldn't make money off of like anything right now. It's like with art, but there's some, it's like so amazing to live and just do that every day. Like to just like to decide that that's like your job. It's hard to do if you don't live somewhere that you know a lot of people or like you don't have family. Like the last time I did that, I was in Colorado with, uh, I lived with my cousin for like a, a couple of months and I quit my job and I would, I just, I had like a regimented, like I would just wake up and I had a shack (laughs) that I could just spend all day in and just go and make music all day in. And it, during the time it was like, I, I felt like I was, I called it like an isolation test or something. It just, it it felt crazy to like be in a shed by yourself every day. There's like no light. I was just drinking like cough syrup (laughs) every day. And I was like, I'm like, this it just feels bizarre like it's it's so far from anything that you know but at the same time in retrospect i'm like the, every time i think about it I'm, there's like my brain is like that oh, that was amazing like that was like the best time of my life or any time that you just decide to like completely like give fuck all and like just go down like kind of like go down that, that rabbit hole i guess it's not really like a rabbit hole but just like kind of explore and just like really push yourself I, I used to look at it as a, a lot more like intensely as I do now because it was really hard to like get I'm sure that, like for you like it was probably really hard to get to this point like it probably took a ton of time yeah and it, but now it's like it's like yeah like I got a studio and it's whatever like you're you're about to like move to a real office and like hire someone else um, it's like 10 years <laughs> yeah and that's what I'm saying like it takes so much time to become that person that you 
that you envision in your head. Like in my head, I'm like a, like I, I, I'll just live in the street and like paint and like be an artist every day. But it's like, that's, I don't, I don't know. That's, that's what I was talking about earlier about like whether it's better to be like self-preserving or to just like live your life like at full fucking speed. Cause I think a lot of like the greatest artists of our time, I, every time I say it, I think of Basquiat, like, I don't even like him that much, but, but people like that who like live those like really fast lives, you know, and, and everyone looks at them like, oh, that's, they're like the greatest. And um, they like did all this crazy shit and there's so much talked about them. And I think everyone has that desire to be that person. You know what I mean? Like to, to try and like pursue that lifestyle. It's so hard though to like, I mean, it's really not. It, it it's terrifying to decide that you just want to like jump into like this fantasy. I don't, I think that's just what it is for me. Is like, like I really just want to like give up on like like quit working. Like I still don't have like a money concept. I think you have both. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and I'm working towards it and. I also think societally we're going to go back to that a little bit. I think that down, like in the next – something's got to give. Back to like – we well, Artists are non-essential. Oh, they're yeah. like They're like the not – they're like not needed, right, mm-hmm. societally. Yeah. Well, that's what the, the general consensus is. But like we're democratizing content creators mm-hmm. through like tools like Patreon and oh, – yeah and podcasts right you mean more like we're gonna go back to like more like vagabond style like yeah we're gonna like, we're gonna go back to valuing artists yeah and and having people that are valued for creating yeah work yeah. like like a uh, that's my belief yeah and yeah i mean there are like there are days where i'm just like this is fucking bullshit. <laughs> I want to be doing a music video or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like it pays too good for me to. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, that's where like, I know, I know what my intention is. Mm-hmm. So like, if I have to sell out for like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't, it doesn't affect my overall integrity because like I, my, my artistic integrity, it doesn't change. You know what it is too? It's like, you have it when you're a child and then as life happens to you, you kind of just lose that. And so it's not being, so people think of it as childish, but really it's being childlike and like just yeah. viewing the world in a way that it's like, you can, it's like, just cause there's a square hole and a square peg, like I could turn it sideways or like yeah. put the hole on top of this, you know, whatever. So yeah. it's like, you just, carve yourself down into like the kind of the world kind of carves you down mm. and so it's kind of like fighting back against that yeah and like i'll do shit like every now and then i'll just like sleep the other way in my bed and i've given that example before it's like a weird one but it's just like or like rearrange your room or that kind of thing mm. because there is like a fear of getting too solidified yeah comfort yes yeah. it's, it's- it kind of like kills you. I mean, how you're? How old are you? Twenty eight. Thirty. I just turned thirty. Like thirty. Like yeah. Um, yeah. Not just December. So. Yeah. Um. Well, before uh, it is a uh, four four. It's like ten after four right now. It? Yeah. We That's can a go for fast. like fifteen more minutes if you want. Yeah. Okay. If, okay. I, if you're if you're getting valuable content. No, absolutely. Can you can you grab me one of those? Yeah, of course. So, um, I'm like losing track of time in here. Like, fucking we should have done this sooner. Like, oh. It took you going to Alaska for me to be like, all right, come by. Yeah. I gotta, and you're actually the first person from the stables because I'm, oh, really? I'm gonna do tugboat and Nate. I'm oh, gonna, you're gonna interview all that. I mean, everyone. I just I just haven't yet mm-hmm. because I, well, the thing is like everyone that's here, like me, is working. So yeah, um, yeah it's grinding. So it's like yeah. But I'll get them all. Um, what's like a couple things that you're like really proud of, and then maybe something that you're like ashamed of? Yes, my entire <laughs> adolescence. Um, some things that I'm really proud of. 
What's the first thing that pops your brain to make it even? I, I just think like changing as a person, probably. Um, I'm, I want to say like, I'm proud of like who I've become considering where I'm from. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of my decisions to pursue the things that I've always wanted to pursue. Um, what about something you're not? I probably the lack of things that I have to be proud of would be the thing I'm not proud about. I mean, when you say like, what are you proud of? It, I, I would, my brain tries to find something like some kind of accomplishment that I've had, you know, to which I am, there's, there's not many of those. Well, well then, okay. So, but then there's also this, like, uh, a, an external accolade of like, I won most likely to succeed or whatever by what, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Like, does that actually provide value? No, to- <laughs> I always, I have this thing that I like, I was never like, uh, <laughs> I, I just always wish I got one of those awards when I was a kid. Yeah. Cause like I never did. And it always, I, I was always like, fuck. Like I, I used to always wish like I would try to get like, a teacher to like think that I was smart, you know, or like try and like, I still do it. Dude. I still am like, I try to like subtly like convince people that I'm smart. So they like look at me a different way. And I think that's probably one of my worst, like, not worst qualities, but it's, like, a really, like... I think it's a very normal quality. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Everyone, I think everyone wants that. I don't think everyone wants it from, like, schools, though. I just, I always wanted people to, like, pay attention to to what I had because I felt like it was valuable. And I still do, definitely. Yeah, I definitely still do. Um so yeah, I, I I just think being where I am today and like kind of like understanding myself a little bit more has made me proud. Um, it's really hard to not like compare yourself to other people when mm-hmm. when someone asks you that question. Because mm-hmm. if if I wasn't being comparative, I would just say like I'm just proud of sitting right like I'm just proud of being here right now and you know being having this conversation because. Dude, I'm proud of I'm proud of not setting an alarm in the morning, and just being able to wake up. I just wake up when I'm. What time do you wake up? Today, I, actually, last night I couldn't sleep, so I went to bed at six, mm-hmm. and then I got up at nine. So you went to bed at six p.m. Mm-hmm. No, at no, no, six a.m. Oh, huh? I was I I was up all night. Oh, I, I don't know why, um, but then usually I'll do like. 11 to 7, 11 p.m. to 7, 7 something like that. Yeah. But, like, some nights it's just, like, Xbox or yeah, absolutely. something like that. No, that's another thing I think that I'm pretty proud of is, like, um, uh, just like, so sleeping in. That's my <laughs> – that's the thing I'm proud of. Yeah, but that shit's hard, though. Is what, what you don't understand about life is, like, it's hard. Like, last year, if I would have – I still do it, dude. It's hard to sleep in and wake up and not be like, nah, what the fuck is going on? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm also just like naturally a really like anxious person. And I'm always like thinking about like other people who are relying on me. Like today I had to wake up and be like, all right, fuck everyone else. Like I'm going to, I had to pack all that and shit. And like, you know, um, but yet yeah, it's really, really difficult just to wake up in that, in a peaceful headspace. Like, and I don't exactly, <laughs> it's it's so complicated because as, as I get older, I realize that the more, um, not fucked up, but like the more, I can't think of a good word. <laughs> I'm, I wanna say like fucked up or like disturbed, but those are terrible. Like, I don't mean like disturbed, like violently, but like 
the like the less uh, at peace you are, I guess, the more like artistically productive I am. Okay. Which is there's a fallacy true. there. Yeah, it, there's some truth to it. There's some truth. There's uh, there's a lot that's the tr- that that's a truth, but the content that I create when I'm at, in that headspace of like not at peace, resentful, angry, you know, full of hate. I'm gonna say come, <laughs> you know, shit like that. It's like you look at you look back at what you made, and none of the content is like valuable. But then you look back at like something that you made. I'm t- I'm talking in terms of like a drawing or like a mm-hmm. painting or whatever. And it's like when you're at peace with yourself, and you you wake up and you're like, get out of bed. You're like, um, do whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna make something today. It, 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 everything that you make is is like more. Um, like there's more like love and there's it, it, it's more uh, not all inclusive <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a word for like universal mm. um, just centered generally yeah centered, centered so, what you, so what you're saying is that like when you're in a better head place you actually do produce better art than when you're like in a manic state kind of I, I think there's a lot of value what were we talking about being proud yeah I, I, there's a lot of value in like the disturb like francis bacon is someone that i admire a lot have you ever seen his paintings Mm-mm. should i pull one up right now uh yeah and i so can throw it up on this screen oh too. yeah okay. yeah so i i think there's a lot of value in uh artists who are like disturbed i mean francis bacon was a uh he was abused when he was a kid and he was like, you know, it's, I mean, uh, Kurt Cobain mm-hmm. was very, I mean, that's, I, I think that there's, uh, an egotistical part of myself that thinks that, um, that, that makes you a better artist. So if he does stuff like that, it's like a little bit darker. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, doesn't even look familiar. I'm surprised I never heard of him. He's, I don't know if he's like super famous, but um, yeah, that's a whole other thing that I th- I think a lot of artists like might experience is like the idea that you have to be like, you know, like like disturbed or something mm-hmm. like that. And I think that none of that actually comes from like you and your adult life. I think it's just like whatever happens to you as a kid. Like, as you were growing up. Freudian thing again? Yeah, yeah, like a Freudian thing. I mean, when I think back to, like, my childhood, I, don't, I can't think of any. I struggle I, with that because I had a, I had a, a good yeah. childhood. Yeah. And, like, nothing horrible to speak of. Yeah. And it's almost like that's my trauma. <laughs> yeah, you were like, you um, didn't get traumatized. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> so why Why am I not happy, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I have everything. Yeah, absolutely. That, why am I depressed all the time? Yeah. I, not, right, not right now, but like all of my 20s. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I just think that that comes from like the, this idea that you, God, I, I wish I could like give you a straight answer because I know exactly what you're talking about, you know? That's why... I went through a lot of the shit that I went through like the past two years is this sensation. Like you start to idolize people that are like heroin addicts and like this and that and the other. Yeah. And that's fine. Cause like those people are like, they're cool, you know, by like, by the like, dictionary definition, they're like that you, you would see them like, and you would probably like at a lunch table, you want to like go sit with them. And, like, they, wonder what they're talking part about. of it. So they, they don't give a fuck. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, I th- I think it's part of their they're authentic. Yeah, they're real. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I I think I don't, I don't know where the desire to be that comes from. It it takes a lot of like oh god I don't know it's just an appealing thing to be I guess like the idea of the the tortured artist. Or something like that. It that's also kind of like a pretty um, not repressive, but like yeah, like kind of like an oppressive like stereotype. I don't know. The thing is, everything that we're talking about is like completely invented by ourselves. You know what I mean? So it's like you give yourself that problem. Mm-hmm. And I think probably the past five minutes, 
that everything that we've said could just we could just not think about it you know what i mean like not not think about it but like that's that's just one of those things that's a problem that you like create for yourself is like i'm not this person um i've actually never really had that i've always just i've never been like i'm not this person so i can't do this it's always just been like i just want to <laughs> it's been like i just want to do drugs or like i want to do heroin or something like that um but and to to come full circle i think i'm be i'm proud of the fact that i've been able to see past that that thought in my head of like i need to be this person to create like this and realizing that i'm a better person when i am actually like being a better person you know what i mean as opposed to like living out that like the artist fantasy which i'm sure a lot of people have um let's talk about uh well, okay. We don't know what you're going to be doing three months from now. Mm-hmm. We don't know what you're going to be doing six months, a year from now. Okay. Are you always going to be, do you think you'll always be an artist or a creative, like creating? Yeah, I think, yeah. I, I feel like it'd be impossible to not be for most people unless they lost all their limbs. And then even then. Do you ever think about where you'll be in five Ten five, years, ten years. I, it's like so hard for me to think ahead like that. I'm so I, I've been trying a lot to do that lately. Um, so I'm trying. I'm trying to not do that lately. Oh, you think about that a lot? Well, I, yeah, I'm like always so focused on what's down the road that I'm really? missing on what's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm working towards being more present in my life. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's definitely difficult. In ten, ten years. I'll be 31 in 10 years. Um, (laughs) Ah, Jesus. Where? 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 Man, I don't know. I want to, like, build, like, a giant mansion for no reason. When I was a kid, I always had a dream of, like, having, like, uh, like a giant castle with like 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 dirt bikes and like slides and like there's like a water park inside it and shit so if i can get to that point in 10 years i'll be pretty happy there's a uh there's a dude a skater named andrew brophy mm-hmm. he's, he's like has one of the highest dollies mm-hmm. uh, he's got like this little uh backyard pad that he's poured with like a hip to a quarter to like a mini ramp yeah. and then like little ledges and stuff yeah and he has like a couple kids maybe like two four and six and like mm-hmm. they all scoot around and like the six-year-old skates now and yeah. so like they just in in like his backyard yeah that sounds like the life to me yeah that's a so, thing for sure um so i don't know i love picking your brain uh, i'm gonna wrap up okay. um uh, we don't know where either of us are going to be down the road, but uh, but you mentioned like kind of having a community of people around you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I can help, but if there's any way I can help, yeah. if you want to pick my brain, I think you can have it both ways. You can get paid to create. Yeah. Um, so, and I want that for you if that's the dream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm hyped that you're going to go fish for two months yeah thanks man i'm excited so um do you have any uh any like words of advice to other people um closing closing words i feel like i had one question for you yeah before i guess no i don't really know no i don't have a question (laughs) um any words of advice uh yeah i think it's been just fucking you just have to be yourself like your unadulterated complete self I think for me I always feel like I'm a fucking dork (laughs) that's the hardest part to get past but once you embrace the parts of you that you like the least which is way easier said than done then shit will start to uh 
come together a little bit in your life? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a textbook definition of cool for sure. No, but <laughs> it's. No, yeah, no. But I. But I. Yeah. But I'm happy with what I'm doing. So no, I, I think it's. I think. You got an office. Dude. Yeah, man. Like I said, I, I. I don't set an alarm in the morning. Like yeah. what? It's like I have my little puppy dog with yeah, me. You got your dog. What else could I want, you know? I get to talk to cool people like you. Um, give us a, a plug. How can people find you and uh, see what you're up to? Um, let's see. I'm on Instagram, bread underscore underscore life. Um, I need to make a website. I, I have questions for you about that. That's another thing. Um, if, you do, if you do build a website, I can drop that in the description. Okay. Um, and uh yeah so that's it yeah so so cool let me close out it's the uh another episode of the creative truth on the books boom in upcoming episodes i'm going to be talking to other artists entrepreneurs and creative professionals to discover their journey to the top the path to success um if you (laughs) if you have episode feedback or guest suggestions you can email me at we create truth at gmail.com uh you can buy swag or learn more about the pod at uh creative-truth.com it was up there but they went to sleep so it's creative-truth.com and uh, we'll see you in the next episode thanks for listening